All right, welcome to Edison Motors. I want to show you our electric truck, show you how it works, show you how it runs, and really what makes an Edison truck an Edison truck. So to introduce us, this is our first um, production prototype. We named it Topsy after the elephant Thomas Edison electrocuted, but this is the Edison truck. Start with, we got a heavy tow pin that is reinforced directly to the frame rails. It's hard to show, but these frame rails here run all the way out. There's no drop leaf. There's nothing that comes down as an extra piece. You have full frame rails the whole way so that when you're stuck in the mud and you're towing on this truck, you're pulling on the actual frame, not just the lower radiator hanger. Of course, because we're up in Canada and you have wildlife or trees or whatever on the road, you got to have a heavy duty grill guard. We copied what uh, kind of Kenworth used to do on the old LW series where she's just a bolted on solid chunk of steel. Headlights, uh, they're not integrated, they're just standalone, they come on their own mount, you can bolt your own style on, whatever you want, change it. But more importantly is that these headlights are cheaper. 100 bucks for a lens, you can buy it on Amazon if you want. It's not a molded piece that's formed into a fender. You, if you hit it with a stick, hit it with something, just go out, get another one from the local parts store, throw it on there, done. On this hood, you'll notice we have a butterfly hood. The reason why we have a butterfly hood is that it's cool. The inside panel just removes. Uh, this is everybody's signature that worked on the truck that was there at the last day of the show. There's probably, it needs to be a lot more signatures on it, but this is some of the signatures of some of the people that worked on the truck. Under the hood here, we have a Caterpillar C9 diesel generator. This literally does nothing but just recharge the batteries. Think about it as you're carrying around your onboard level three fast charger. Of course, in there, the things are easy. I love the butterfly hood because you got a little workbench. You're sitting here, you got a little workbench to sit on, wrench on the truck, you can lay your tools down there. It's one of the reasons why I like a butterfly. Some mechanics hate it. Personally, I think it's nice to have a little seat as you're working. So in this truck, we do have a diesel generator, but the nice thing about our driveline system is that it does not have to be a diesel. You could put a natural gas generator, a propane, a gasoline, you could put a hydrogen fuel cell, or you could just stack more batteries under the hood if you want full EV. Our inverters do not care where the power comes from. This is a totally fuel agnostic truck. We just went with diesel generators because diesel is what we know, it's a proven variable, and it allows us to test everything else without getting too fancy under the hood. Here we got the Edison cab. So we went with a kind of a dozer style cab. It looks more like a skidder or a loader because it's meant to work off highway. It's meant to be a heavy vocational truck. So we really copied that bulldozer, skitter design, and once you sit in it and drive it, fantastic. Also, we're the only electric truck with a drop visor because you need to have a good visor on a truck. Stop making electric trucks without visors. Bring the visors back. Okay, one of the things too is with our mirror style we went with is that number one, you have no mirror brackets obstructing your view. From the driver's seat, all you see is a mirror dropping down. The other thing, if you gotta work on your hood, you gotta wanna check anything out, you can just walk freely past here. There's no arms to get in the way. You wanna clean your glass, you're working in mucky conditions, hop out, clean the glass, walk around. You're not moving around a bunch of mirror brackets. And yes, it is stable. We have had it out on the highway at 110 kilometers an hour. It is stable. One of the cool things about this truck, slidey windows, like a piece of heavy equipment. I like the window slides. Although in the future one, I'm probably just gonna make the window crank down. It's probably better, but like, I just thought that was neat for a <laughs> prototype. One thing I do want to show off here is this door hinge. Just a nice mechanical linkage, no cable, easy to work on, easy to service. Let me show you some things in the cab that I think are really cool. Under here, the airlines come up here where they are super easy to service and work on. Like if you need access to them, they're right there. They're not tucked in behind a firewall. Old school trailer jerry bar. You know how much this is? like 80, 100 bucks. It's metal, it's made to last. Another detail on this truck. Everything we use here is steel braided airlines, everywhere. This stuff doesn't wear, it lasts forever. It's just going, it's not gonna have the leaks that push connectors use. This is gonna last a very long time. This one, if even if this thing does leak, it's metal. You can undo the screws, replace an O-ring if the O-ring's leaking. Same as the turn signal. Old school style turn signal. Kenworth had it all the way through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Western Star had it to the mid 2010s. Uh, simple switches, easy to get, easy to work on, easy to replace. Simple air gauges, 
backlit gauges. Don't mind the fit and finish on the switches. We've got new switches made. We've got to install them. I just haven't had time to do that. Videos never do it justice, but have a look at the visibility on that thing. Like you can see Theron everywhere as it walks around. Like in a snowplow application, your view out of there at the snowplow would be absolutely fantastic. This is sitting at driver's height. You can see everything. Lean slightly this way, see everything. You're coming onto a scale, a bridge. The visibility out of this cab is just absolutely fantastic. Coming up here, uh, old school wigwag. I don't like a low air warning buzzer, so I went with the light on the dash and just the wigwag. Up here, we do have some digital displays because you need all the information from the batteries. It's just, that would be impossible on analog. So this is the part, the electric side is all CAN bus, has to be. So we made simple to use gauges. Uh, how does that work? How do you say that? Oh, uh, consumption, IO, all of your information on there. It tells you absolutely everything. When the faults come up, they don't, like it doesn't, it tells you exactly what the fault is. And then it will go into detail about what your fault codes are. It's not just a three digit code, four digit code is gonna tell you something's wrong. It's gonna tell you, hey, this is what's wrong. Here's some troubleshooting. This is explains why it's wrong. I don't want a truck that you have to drive in to a dealership and pay $300 just to hook up. This truck will tell you what's wrong with it. And I love that. Because let's face it, trucks do break down. Trucks do have issues. You gotta know what those issues are. Wipers. So each wiper is on its own switch. You can turn that one off. So if you're getting road spray, say just on this side of the truck, you got a little world spray, that just wipe that window. I think that's neat rather than having all three on when you don't need it. Washer fluid is just down there on a button. So if you'll notice, we have a very skinny dash. And the reason why we get away with skinny dash is we want the visibility. But to be able to do that, we can't put a bunch of things behind the dash. So everything is in this box here, this box here. Sorry, it looks a bit of a mess. Uh, Eric is actually just working on this now. Um, but this is all the controls. So if you need to work on anything, you can sit in the driver's seat and you can reach all of these controls, change your fuses, go through your wiring, it's convenient. You're not tucked up under here with your feet hanging up at the freaking roof as you try and reach under here and work on wiring. The amount of wiring under here is super minimal because I've worked on a lot of trucks and this position to work on trucks sucks. I'm fat, it's uncomfortable, it's not good. Like, uh... Have a look under here, there is very very minimal stuff. Don't mind the cable management, but that's it. That's all the wiring you have under the dash. Like you can work on that. And if you do have to work on it, because working under your socks, you'll notice this dash is just held on with a bunch of bolts. You just undo these bolts, pull that cover off, pull that cover off. You can strip this dash down to its bare frame in like a minute. It's just six bolts and this whole dash comes apart. Plus, because it's actual grade eight bolts holding on the dash, probably doesn't need to be grade eight, but because it's actual bolts holding this dash on, it is solid. There is not going to be any rattle in the dash. And if your dash rattles, tighten the bolt back up a little bit. Here's another cool thing. The high beam switch is off the floor. So when you're driving down the road, someone comes, just reach down, hit that. I like that. Hit a button in the cab and all of a sudden your running lights turn into off road lights. I love that. That is going to be such nice visibility at night. We need to chain up, hook onto a trailer in the dark. All the lights should do that. That's sweet. One of the things I love about this truck, check out how smooth this door closes. As a trucker, that makes a big difference to me. Two fingers, door closes, smooth, solid. That's how a door should close. Okay, one of the cool things about our truck is that this thing that looks like a headache rack is actually not a headache rack. Electric trucks need what you call a power distribution unit. We put ours in the headache rack, turned what looked like a headache rack so that it looks clean. It looks like it should be a truck. Because I'm tired of ugly looking EVs. It should just look like a thing. Now in an actual truck, if you needed to use it for a headache rack, we could relocate it into those side boxes in there, the power inverters. But for now, I want to be able to show it off because this is kind of what's cool. This side here is all of your contactors, your fuses, the safety equipment, this is what makes sure that the electric thing is safe. If there's an issue, it blows out fuses, shuts itself down. This is the ground fault monitoring all in this box. The middle cabinet here is all of your power inverters. 
These are what take the power from that generator and put it into the batteries that are under our feet right now. These are the inverters that take the power from the batteries and put it to the electric motor. Basically, you have AC power coming off the generator. Batteries store it in DC power, and then you got to take the DC power from the batteries back to the AC electric motor. So we just have to change how the power is from alternating a direct current between different parts of the truck. These are the inverters that do that. These are Dan Foss DC to DC. They just take DC current and transfer it to other DC current. Really, there's a lot of extra space. We had an extra space in the headache rack. We probably could have put chains in and relocate, but well, whatever, they're there. So that DC to DC, you got to remember that there's other things being run off of this truck. There, there's electric power steering. We have electric air compressor. We also have low voltage batteries to run taillights, turn signals, LED displays. So what it does is it takes the high voltage power from the batteries and it puts it into lead acid batteries in these boxes on each side. And what we also have here is a plug-in. So you can pull up to a charger, plug your truck in, you're done at the end of the day, plug it in, done. Under here, you notice these are where we put our batteries. These are what make this hybrid system so efficient. So people ask, you still have a generator under there, what's the point of doing the batteries? It's because these are 4C rated batteries. What a 4C battery means is that it can discharge four times its capacity. So we have 280 kilowatt hours of batteries, so we can actually pump out 1200 kilowatts, 1500 horsepower. Of course, we're only using about 700, 800 horsepower on the back, but these act for your peak load demand. So when you're accelerating off the line, you can run a 350 horsepower diesel. It just maintains that average load on the batteries. When you need to accelerate, they discharge at that 4C, give you a ton of power. And when you're coming downhill, or you're coming down and you're slowing down to a stop sign, you re -put, you take the power, put it back into the batteries. It just, this setup makes the truck way more efficient. So these batteries under here, if you'll notice, they're actually on air ride. That way, when you're hitting bumps, these batteries are isolated from the frame rail. They're gonna bounce, they're gonna float. They're not gonna take that vibration that the truck is gonna get pounded out. It's just gonna give you a smoother ride for the batteries and it's really gonna increase the lifespan of the batteries. Plus, the air is all the way down right now. But when they inflate, they lift it up to give you even more ground clearance. I mean, we already have a ton. But on a logging truck, you can't have enough. These will come up to there. These will lift up just a little bit. Cool. Here's a view from under the truck. You'll notice these batteries. Now remember, they do go up with the airbags, but these batteries have thick skid plating steel all the way underneath, steel reinforcement. So if you do skid something, you're not gonna puncture those batteries. Here is our air compressor, air dryer. Honestly, I had a lot of extra frame rail space, so I just put the air tanks there. Yeah, it works. On this end here, this is our electric air compressor. You'll notice the diesel still has an air compressor, works as a backup, but we also have an electric air compressor. So when you're running as a pure EV, this is what builds your air. One of the other things you'll notice about our truck is that we've got a full set of tire chains. I think we're actually one of the only electric trucks that has tire chains on it, but that's because we built this truck to go work out in the worst conditions possible. The mud, the snow, the steep mountain logging roads. So you gotta have these things if you're gonna do that job. Okay, on the back end, one of the things I wanna show you because it's a good view of the frame rail, you'll notice we don't run 3 8 frame rail, we put half inch frame rail. It gives you almost the same PSI tensile strength as doing a double frame, but you're not gonna get any rust jacking between those two frame rail plates. So it's way stronger than a 3 8 but it doesn't have the rust jacking and it's gonna give you longer term. Is it a little bit heavier? Actually, it's lighter than a double frame, but it's heavier than a single frame. I just like it. It's gonna be the best for long-term reliability. On the back end of the truck here in the axles, these are really, really what the Prime Joy. These are E-axles. So we worked with a company to specifically develop them for these, for this truck, because this is heavy, heavy spec. The size, the thickness of those axles, they're 52,000 pound axles. We got dual torque arms, both directions to really stabilize this, this suspension because last thing you want is those axles traveling when you're off-road. Yes, can you can get by with one torque arm. I definitely prefer two. This truck we have on Hendrickson rubber block suspension. Now, yes, production trucks will be air ride, but Hendrickson rubber block is bulletproof 
and it will shake this truck loose. Remember, this is a prototype, a proof of concept truck. Nice big old set of planetaries. Going under here for just some E-roll footage. There are the electric axles. That is the electric motor right there. And believe it or not, these electric motors, super, super powerful. Each one has over 350 horsepower, which means that together they're pushing over 700 and closer to 800 horsepower and 80,000 foot pounds of torque at the wheels compared to a diesel, 550 horsepower diesel that's about 60, 70,000 foot pounds of torque. We're 80, 85,000 foot pounds of torque. These motors are monsters. So this is our electric truck. The best way to think of this truck is that this truck is fully electric 100%. It does not need the diesel to fire. Now off the batteries alone, you get about two, three hours max off the batteries. But then as soon as you fire up your generator, whether it be diesel, natural gas, hydrogen fuel cell, you can essentially run forever. As long as you keep fuel in those tanks, this truck will run as electric. Think about it as an electric vehicle that just packs around its own fast charger. You're running off the batteries that are inside the frame rail. The power goes from the batteries to the inverter and the headache rack to the axles. And then as you deplete those batteries, the generator fires up, sends the power back up into the headache rack and into the batteries. Although if you are using the axles while the generator's on, there is a shunt, it bypasses and it goes directly to the axles first and then trickle charges the batteries. But in total, it takes about an hour to recharge those batteries from dead. You get about two hours of driving, which means that you only need to run the generator 50% of the time. So not only are you running a much smaller diesel for half the time, it's actually running more efficiently because it's running at one RPM. It fires up, it stays right at 1700 and it just stays there constantly while you're running it which means it's getting the most out of every single drop of fuel. It's running cleaner, it's not soot loading, which means that the emissions you're getting are lower. It, it's just, it's a much more efficient way to run a diesel. A lot of people say that, oh, that sounds great. Isn't this thing heavy? And the truth is it's actually not that heavy. Putting in a hybrid system weighs equivalent to the amount of weight of about a normal diesel truck. So. What happens is you go from a 15 liter engine down to an eight or nine liter engine. So you lose about 2000 pounds plus off that engine. The generator on the back end weighs a little bit less than an automatic transmission. Plus you lose your drive line and then you add the batteries. The batteries weigh 1500 to 2000 pounds. So that by the time you do it and you change it, the weight actually balances out, especially if you consider you're not gonna be burning as much fuel, so you don't need as big a fuel tank to get the same range you were getting off that, so you lose weight in fuel. Overall, the weight is very comparable, but you get an allowance depending on the area you're in. In BC, you get an extra 1500 kgs. You get an extra 3,400 pounds. In California, you get an extra 2,000 pounds. So by doing this, you can actually increase your payload capacity. Now they gave you the tolerance because it's deemed as an electric vehicle and they think, well, electric has so many batteries it's got to carry. But the truth is the hybrid doesn't increase the weight and you can still take advantage of that weight allowance. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Okay, another thing I want to point out about what we use, you'll notice all of the bolts on here are standard grade eight bolts. We don't use huck bolts because huck bolts aren't field serviceable. The only way you get a huck bolt off is basically torch it out. So if you're out in the field and you have a suspension component or something that's cracked, if it's got a huck bolt on it, you can't service it. This, the mechanic can grab the impact, grab a wrench, change the part he needs to change, get the guy on his way without having to call out a welding rig or a set of bottles and torches and cutting. It's just, this is more efficient for a vocational truck. All right, guys, so that's the tour of Topsy here. Hope it answered some, some questions about how a hybrid electric truck works. Got any other questions, leave them down there in the comments and hopefully we can respond to them as many as you can. And if we don't, can somebody else help respond to the questions? <laughs>